So here's an interesting example. When you're trying to find out and you're learning about kind of equivalent resistance and also trying to figure out how to find voltages and currents in circuits like this, which seem rather complicated, I want to be able to show you how you can step through this example. So it's a nice example to be able to see, you know, how you can utilize Ohm's law uh, and Kirchhoff's laws to be able to go through a circuit like this. So we're going to have um, kind of multiple things that we want to be able to do. So clearly I didn't give any resistance uh, within here. So uh, I'm going to make all the resistors actually the same. Now it doesn't matter. It, it does make our life a little bit easier. Okay. If they're the same, uh, the calculations will be, but if you can imagine that all of these resistors are identical. So let's, you know, say this is R, this is R. So they're basically all exactly the same values throughout. So the first thing that I would want to do in such a situation is to find the equivalent resistance. And then the second thing what I would want to be able to do is I want to be able to find every single voltage across all of the resistors. So all of these voltages, that's what we will try to find. And we're going to try to find all the currents that are flowing through the resistors as well. So we're going to be using quite a lot of tools in order to do that. So this is a good fun exercise for anyone who's trying to study these particular circuits and then uh, learning about Kirchhoff's laws, Ohm's laws, etc. Okay. And equivalent resistance. So first step is let's try to find, let's cut this thing off. Okay. And let's imagine that we have this battery right here and it is looking inward and we want to find the equivalent resistance for the entire thing. All right. So let's try to do that. I will give the R a value so that we can find voltages and currents, but I'll do that afterwards. All right. So first let's just work with R and we don't exactly know what this R is. All right. So the first thing that I would want to point out is when I take a look at this, I can see that for instance, these two, okay, are in parallel. These two are also in parallel. These two are in parallel and well, nothing else will be in parallel. But so if you take one of these in here, so as you're working through this, so let's say we take these two in parallel. The nice thing is, is that when you have the resistance and it's identical, you may remember that the equivalent resistance, so it has this kind of funny equation where the equivalent resistance is one over equivalent divided by one over the first resistor divided by one over the second resistor. And if you manipulate um, this entire thing, so what you will find is that this whole thing is going to give you, so you're going to get R1 plus R2 divided by, and this is going to be R1 over R2. So this is just finding a common denominator. So multiplying the two resistors and finding that common denominator in between. But of course, this is just one over R E Q. So from that point of view, if you want to know what the equivalent resistance is, you have to basically, so you have to just flip it, right? You have to take the reciprocal of these and you may recall. So this is a very common equation when you are dealing with equivalent resistance in parallel for two of them. Now, because of the fact that they are identical, so look what happens here. So because they're identical, so this is going to be R times R divided by R plus R. And in other words, this is going to be just R squared divided by two R. So one of these R's will cancel and you're going to get R divided by two. Now, why I'm pointing this out is the fact that this is very commonly done, especially, you know, when your teachers or your profs are kind of pulling on you where you have two resistors in parallel and they're identical resistors. So instead of going through all of this math or remembering all of these, if these two are the same, then right away, you know that the equivalent resistance between them is just R divided by two, basically half of it. 
and that just comes from here. Now, if you want, you know, the equivalent resistance in my discussion, both in series and parallel, I'll put up a link up above there in case you want to be able to see it. So really, you know, as you can see here, what we have is, so that's R over two. Um, this right here is going to be R over two. This right here, so this whole parallel thing is R over two as well. So this now simplifies quite a bit. So in fact, you know, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get, I'm not going to make it as pretty, I guess. Uh, maybe let's see if I can steal this away. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but let's give it a try. Okay, so it did work. So we have something like this. And then what we're carrying through, okay, is basically you now have this, where this is R over two, this is R over two, this is R over two, right? So I'm gonna keep this because we're gonna come back to this when I'm gonna give you a value so that we can actually figure out what the currents, etc., are, okay? So let's bring it maybe upwards, okay, a little bit there. Now, in terms of the equivalent resistance, well, now again, so this, these are in series, right? So in series, so all of this, well, that's pretty nice because it's R over two plus or plus R over two plus R over two, which is gonna be three R over two, right? So again, what you have is you're gonna have this, you can duplicate it. Again, I'm gonna kind of leave it in here. And then all of a sudden, you know, this becomes now very simple because it's just three R over two. All right, so there you have that. Now from this point, if you wanna continue finding the equivalent resistance, well, these two now are in parallel, right? So you can utilize this equation, so the equivalent equation between two resistors. Now, they're, they're not identical in this case, so we can't just say it's R over two. We actually do have to compute this out. So that's gonna be the multiplication of these. Let me put, okay, maybe, so now what we will have, so within here, so I'm gonna just take these two right here and find out what this would give me. So that's gonna be the multiplication, right? R times three R over two, and then the addition of those. So the addition of these, which is R plus three R over two. So well, R, because I want the common denominator in there, so I'm gonna put this two R over two, which is just R and then plus the three R over two. So this resistors is really just this, I just made it two over two, so that I can add these together. And that's going to give me, so here you have three, this is gonna be R squared, this is over two, divided by, now two plus three is five, so this is five R over two. Notice the twos cancel, right? So this is just fraction. And the R, one of them cancels. And then all you have here is three R over five, right? So this is what we have. And that's my new resistor right there. And once you do that, well, and then it becomes really simple. Maybe I'm just kind of running now, okay? Where you, all you have is this. Okay, so this is going on. This is R. Now I have only one resistor right and this resistor is 3 r over 5 and this is 15. so what is my equivalent resistance my equivalent resistance well now these two are in series it's going to be just r plus 3 r over 5 or in other words this is just 5 r over 5 plus 3 r over 5 which is 8 r over 5 that's my equivalent resistor to the entire thing so that's much um, nicer to be able to talk about. So now let's throw a wrench into this and let's try to find out, all right, can we find out all of these different currents and voltages across all of these, right, as you're going through. So how would you do that? Well, if you know the equivalent resistance and you know that this particular battery is 15, so, I mean, you can just use Ohm's law right away, right? So you have 15 going through one resistor, okay? So within here, so that's plus 15. This is 8R over 5. Now, let's set R and let's make it 10 ohms, all right? Let's do that. 
and then we can actually talk about values. So, well, 10, that's going to be 80. Um, so you have 80 uh, divided by 5. Okay, so right there. So this is 80 divided by 5. And I guess that's equal to 16 ohms. Um, that's what you would have right there, right? So 80 divided 5 goes into 8 once. And then you have 3 left over. So 30. So that's going to be 16 ohms. And now, because of Ohm's law, so V I R, so this is 15, right? I is equal to just simply the division. So that's going to be I equal to 15 over 16. And that's my current, right? So this is the current that's actually flowing. Now, you can, you can change it to a decimal if you want it to, so I'll just leave it okay, in fraction form for the moment. Now, with this, now you can start kind of going back in. So what does this mean? Well, what this means, so for instance, if I go back into here, what that is saying is that, so this current is, you know, 15 over 16. So I, I know that, and that's going to be going through this. So 15 over 16, you know, etc. So this just keeps going into here, so 15 over 16. Now, the next thing that we can do, we can certainly, so I can kind of shift over here, and I can find out, and I can use, okay, and find what the voltage is across this resistor, right? So what's the voltage? Well, the voltage is nothing else but the resistance, which is 10, times the current, right? So that's going to be 150 um, divided by, you know, 16. So within that. So notice that now I can find out exactly what this voltage is across. Okay, so from here, I'm going to make it in this direction. So let's have that current in that way. So indeed, so we have you know, 15 all over 16 multiplied by the resistance, which is 10. So that's just V is equal to IR. And, you know, we have our answer. So again, you can keep it in whatever you like. So let's put it 75 over 8. All right. So that's the voltage across through here. So now I have a current. I have a voltage. Now, as soon as I have a voltage, well, what I can do is now I can start playing around with these, right? And start seeing what is going to be happening over here. So first of all, um, so notice that you can do just KVL, right? So if you take this and you draw out your loop, okay, within here. So the KVL tells us that we know what the voltages around the loop are, right? When we're summing them up, they're supposed to be equal to zero. Okay, so within, okay, as you're going through, so what I'm going to have over here is the following. So this gives me now, so through that loop, so I have voltage across here, voltage across here as well. So I'm going to assume that the voltage is plus minus like this, so that as I'm going through, I'm going to have the 15 volts is going to be equal to, or it's going to be equivalent to the 75 over 8 plus whatever voltage across that resistance is, right? So that VR over here, that's this right there. So they have to be equal. And now, well, that's not very difficult. I can bring that one over and I'm going to solve exactly for what that is. So it's going to be, you know, 15 minus this. Let's, we have this already on the calculator. So I'm going to put minus the 15, okay, equals, except of course it's not negative, it's positive. So that is, maybe let's do that, so times negative one. So we have 45 over eight. So that's gonna be this voltage across through here. So 45 over eight. But now, so that we have this voltage, we can find out what the current is right there. So if that's 45 over 8, so what we have is the following. So we have 
V is equal to IR. And so this is 45 over 8. The R is just 10, right? So the current I, well, that's going to be 45 okay, over 80, which is, you know, we can certainly uh, reduce that. Okay, so dividing by 5 again. So this, I guess, is going to be 16. This is a 9. Okay, and now we have our current. Okay, so as you're going um, all the way uh, through. So this is so nine, so nine over sixteen, uh, right there. That is going to be the current which is flowing over here. So nine over sixteen, and if you're thinking back, well, now you can use Kirchhoff's laws. So I'm going to shift back over. So just because it's the one above is is a little bit cleaner. So now I have this, you know, current. So nine over 16. So I definitely know this current because of KCL. So Kirchhoff's current laws tell me that the currents coming in and currents coming out have to be equivalent to each other. All right. So you can certainly write this in. So we have this current coming in, you know, this current coming out, and let's assume that this current is coming out as well. So we're going to have 15 over 16 is going to be equivalent to 9 over 16 plus Okay, so this current, but hold on a second, it's supposed to be equal to, um, so it's supposed to be equal to 15 over 16 in total. So that just means that this is 16 over 16, right? Um, or, you know, if you want to be reducing it down, I guess it's going to be three. Um, so divided by two, okay, so three over eight. So that's going to be the current now coming into here. So this is three over eight, okay, which is flowing in this direction. And of course, as soon as you have that, right, so that three over eight, well, what's happening is this, so this is three over eight flowing into here, right? Now that three over eight is of course coming out. So it's coming out right here. So if it comes into here, it has to come out and continue. Now, how does it, so it splits in here and you might be thinking like, oh my gosh, this is another split is gonna be hard. No, because these two are equivalent. These resistors are equivalent. So the current coming in, so notice this current and this current, these have to be the same because you have the same resistance across it, right? The, the voltage that you have also is going to be the same. So this now all of a sudden is not very difficult, right? So that you have, okay? So this is really just three over eight divided by two, right? And dividing by two, so it becomes... So three over 16, right? So three over 16 flows in. So that's the current which goes through here and it flows through here. This is also three over 16. And as soon as you have that, you know what the voltage is because the voltage across that is going to be, the resistance is 10. So 10 times three over 16, and there you have it. So you have, you know, so it's basically 30 over 16, okay? Or you can reduce it. So that will give you what the voltage is, okay, across this. And of course, the voltage here has to be the same. These are in parallel, okay, all the way through. But now check this out. Well, where does this current go? Well, this current now goes and splits again into exactly the same thing. So it's three over eight, and again, it's split in half, right? And then it flows out, and again, it's split in half. And of course, this right here is going to be three over eight coming out. Okay, as you're going through in here, because this current is coming in, and so this current has to come out overall. So actually, you're done. Okay, you've actually solved for everything. This is a really good example, right? And it kind of shows you that this isn't as complicated as sometimes we think. But you know, you do have to understand series. You have, you have to understand um, parallel. You have to use KVL. So use that. I'm using KCL as well, so and Ohm's law all together. So this is a really nice example. It's almost like, a, here you go, here's an exam example, and I wonder who would be able to solve something like this for equivalents, in terms of resistors, and then flows in circuits. All right, okay, so that is it for this video. I hope that you found this example useful, and it really tests you on those three major components from you know, Kirchhoff's laws, Ohm's laws, and then equivalent resistors. Thanks for watching. See you in a future video.
Bye, everybody.